Uh, the way that I would go for, for this, if you, if you um, let me stop the share, and let me configure this to be now paired. And let me share again my full screen. Okay, so now the way that I would do this, did I actually hit? Yes. The way that I would do this, if you have never installed it, so install Docker and search for that, and install Docker will show you the first uh, result that you get, Docker desktop format. It's, it's uh, what I have here. Uh, so the, there's another, uh, so the, the, the nicest documentation that I found, simplest documentation that I found is to uh, run LaTeX on Docker and I have uh, data science. Yes, three ways to create Dockernized LaTeX document. Here, you have a very nice introduction okay, to run LaTeX inside Docker and Tech Workshop. And the idea starts with the fact that you need to have Docker installed, okay? So uh, if you don't have Docker installed and you have a Mac, there's a package that allows you to install it and it will run over here as a desktop of Docker at the end. You can figure out whether you actually have Docker installed by simply, um, let me hide. Okay. Um, you can actually see whether you have Docker installed by checking. Actually here, I would like to have new tab with basic profile so that you actually see in a much easier way. Oops. Let me go to Git Playground and let's go to Lab03. Okay. I, you, you should not have this Lab03 in your, in your directory because it's still not there. So the nice things about the nice, the very nice thing about Docker is that the configuration of Docker it's actually done through text files. This has several advantages. One main advantage is you can actually put those text files into GitHub repositories. And you can instruct GitHub actions and you can instruct uh, both GitHub and Docker Hub to actually build the images according to what's written in the Docker files. Okay. So let me show you as an example, one Docker file that uh, is usually what I use as a starting as my starting point for every Docker file, right? So this is inside the contrib Docker directories and uh, of the GIL2 library. I'm using always that example because it's the example that I've created and, and I've generated for several things. Okay. Now this is not going to be very visible unless I make it larger. Can you can you actually see? Um, shall I close the lines? So let's start from the from objects that you see here. Okay. So this looks very much like a um, a GitHub repository, you see? So there's the name of the user, the name of the image, and then there's a column that says on what version of the image you're looking at, what version you need to be using for that. So if you know what, if you don't know what that is, let's search for DLI dependencies, Docker Hub. You go there, 
And on Docker Hub, you will see that there's a user called DLII. This is the user that, you, that we were looking at. And the user DLII, DLII, well, the user DLII has a Docker image called DLII. That's a Docker image for the DLI, DL2 library. That's the uh, running image for the library itself. Okay? So if you pull DLII, DLII, you will get the latest version of the DL2 library. Okay? And if you want to understand what are the available DLII files of the, the DL2 libraries files that you have here, you go to tags and this tells you what are the various tags available for the DL2 library. And you have all the versions of the DL2 library from 8.5, if I remember correctly, 8.4, 8.5 here on different sizes of the images. The images are growing in size with time, as you see. And the latest version is available here. And if you issue this command, it will actually do what it says on the box. It will pull the latest version of that image. Let's do that comment. And let's see what happens, right? We will think about this for a second. And then as you see here, it tells you, look, I'm pulling from this image, from DLI, from this user, the image DLI. And if you don't say anything, it always pulls the latest tag. So the latest is the default tag that is being pulled. And as you see here, uh, all of these were not unloaded. The last one, yes. The last one is the, the, is the latest shell one of the image. And you can imagine this is the latest version of the DL2 library, which depends on a lot of other libraries and a lot of other things. Right? So what's happening here is that it pulls everything up to the latest part, and then the latest part is different with respect to the previous one. So it pulls the newest version that you have of it. Okay. Once you have pulled that, what can you do with this? Well, there's many, many, many ways to run that, but the easier is Docker run. If you give an image name to that, it will try to do something which is associated with the uh, entry point of that image. Meaning, if that image is configured to be uh, a Docker, a daemon program or an application program, what happens is that when you run this guy over here, it will run the application that is thought to be the application of the image. Okay. Indeed, if you want to use this as a container to develop your own software, probably you want to run the image in an interactive manner. Right? So you want to be able to enter commands on the command line. Like, so that means I need to run interactively and to have a terminal. And I don't care about keeping the image after I've run this command. Okay, so as soon as I exit, the temporary image that is created it will be deleted. So these three are interactive, Give me a terminal and don't keep the image once I've run it. And if I hit enter here and then don't say anything, this will drop me into the default entry point of the image, which is bash. The image by default runs bash. So basically, it's as if I have now come logged in into a machine that is local because it's a local machine, it's running on my computer, but it contains the latest version of the DL2 library as of today. So these are, uh, so this DL2 latest is automatically generated on GitHub Actions and it's pushed on GitHub IO as soon as I finish compiling. Okay. So I'm sure that this contains a compiled version of the library, the latest possible version of the library. And this is in short because no merge commit is done on GitHub until this actually succeeds. So when this succeeds, then I can make the merge. As soon as I make the merge, this image is created. Is it clear? This allows you to say, anybody that, can, that calls you and, and says, okay, I want to run your software now. How do I do it? And you say, okay, just pull that and run, finish. Nothing else. No configuration based, no hours, hours, and trying to make things work. So you do the hours of making it work. Once you've done it once, this will run for everybody else. Okay? So this is very convenient and very powerful, especially because 
it's available also for different types of operating systems and different types of uh, operating environments, say, for example, on a cluster. So if you, if you spend weeks to make the right combinations of libraries, the right combinations of make files, make files, and, and test libs, and, and you ensure that everything works with those things, you don't want to you know, shoot, at, shoot in the dark and, and, and guess that everything will work again with different types of, slightly different types of versions of the libraries. You will be surprised how many things break when you change uh, a TensorFlow library to one version to another version if you're, if you're doing something complex, okay? So now, how do I, what do I see here? Well, I see here whatever the generator of the image decided that I should see here, right? So if I ask, what, where am I? It, it will say that, okay, you are currently in the home VLI directory. And let me move this on the side so you can actually see everything, okay? You're in the home VLI directory. If I ls, there is nothing here so far. And this is a totally isolated environment with respect to the host computer. So this may or may not be what you need to do. You might need to, to have, for example, the sharing of some directories with your host environments. You have to be careful. Okay. We have, we will, I will show you how to do this particular thing. And uh, once you're here, if you want to make sure that the library is installed, for example, I know where the library is installed, is installed in USL local. And I can see that this is installed there because there is a summary log, which is created by the library here. And this is the deal to library summary log file that is used for the installation of the library. So this is version 9.3.0 of the deal to library, okay? And you see here, these are all the additional libraries that are installed in this image. So there's RPAC, async, boost, complex values are enabled, no CUDA, no Jenko, GMesh, GSL, HDF5 support, Cocos, LAPAC, Mantis, MPI, MuParser, Open Cascade, PFORest, Petsy, Scalapac, Slepsy, Sundial, SimEngine, TDB, Trilinus, Umfpac, and Zetlib. Okay? If you think about how many libraries these are, and how many versions do you have to check whenever you install those libraries? And I mean, this life, life becomes very, very quickly a terrible nightmare if you want to maintain this in a consistent way between your testing environment and development environment. Okay. You now, once you have this at your disposal, you can run examples. So I can enter in the user local examples. Look at there, there's an example, which is, uh, I don't know, step one, for example. And this is, uh, I, if I run CMake now, it will say that I cannot do that because uh, it doesn't, I don't have permission to do that, okay? But let me let me cheat this and say sudo chom dlii dlii dot. And now this should allow me to do that, okay, yes. This is now generated a make file from CMake, which I can, by calling name. And of course, I'm, I'm running these instructions just to give you an example, right? This is a library that usually takes a couple of hours to build without the external libraries. And if you have to install all the external libraries from scratch, it will take you roughly five, six hours according to what, what's the power of the machine to be able to install. To install all the possible libraries. The installation size of this object, the entire object, is about one gigabyte, roughly. One gigabyte of libraries, not nothing else. Okay. Now this is installed file, which is this guy. This actually generates two files, which are step one, grid one SVG and grid two SVG, which I cannot access. I cannot visualize those from here because this is internal on the container and the container has no uh, X server installed, for example. So I have no way to access these files unless I, put, I, I, I try, I, uh, SSH somewhere, copy those files somewhere, and then go back. So, for example, I can do that. And um, let me let me let me show you why this is also very powerful. I go to one step, which is instead um, again sudo chom dlii dlii here. Now, run cmake, run make. Just to give you an example, uh, this file is uh, with all of this is configured to run also the MPI so in parallel. 
So I can run this code in parallel to solve the Poisson problem on Matal with, with the locally refined meshes, which is exactly what step 40 does. And I can run this on the full processor, for example, running right step 40. And this will actually do that and then show uh, so some, some, some things at the end of this. Okay. And of course, the time to run this locally on the Mac is going to be larger because this runs under virtual machine. So this is a container inside a virtual machine, which is indeed not as effective and not as um, fast as it could be if you ran naturally, if you ran natively. So if I do the same thing locally on, on step 40, you will see a machine that is running in less than 10 seconds. Here we are still 15 seconds and it doesn't need to. So, this has an overhead for a Mac for serious programs, which is very large, but for testing, it's perfect. Okay. So keep this in mind. If you have a machine which is not a Linux-based machine, if it's a Linux-based machine, the overhead is very small. Okay. So this was just to give you an example of how things work uh, with, with uh, a library, which is a very complex library, like the Now, if I act, yes. Can I give the ruler on the same library? Yes. Like, uh, the I'm trying to run it. Yes. But uh, this is like an M1 uh, Mac, uh, and it gave me the requested image platform does not match the detected host platform. And oh, that's an M1 Mac. Oh, uh, that's very interesting. I have no idea. <laughs> so, so this should be, um, so the virtual machine on Docker should actually run a standard. Uh, so do, does Docker run on there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried it um, with the other uh, containers. Okay. But for instance, here with the TL2 library, it just uh, doesn't run. Huh. Can you try to, um, I mean, there should be a way to request a specific architecture for Docker. I just have no idea. <laughs> Maybe I, okay, I will check that. So Docker help usually tells you if there is a way to run on a specific architecture. All right, so let's check on the web, run Docker on, M1 Mac. Uh, so run Ubuntu images on Docker on M1 Mac. So Docker is supported. Um, it should be possible, apparently. Yes. Yes. So it says uh, you need to have Mac OS 1014 or more. And it shows here. So Docker, where to get next? I, I thought that was exactly what they, what they searched for. There was a okay, so do you need to install Rosetta? Sure, that's okay. Well, I think you did that already, right? So, yeah, yeah, but I mean, because I tried with other containers and it was really, it's, it's like a it's slowing down the container, but it does run. Okay. Whereas in this case, it's just uh, hanging there. So I don't know if it's like yeah, that. I think, I think because probably the image that we specified does not uh, explicitly state that it should run on, on, on Rosetta on Mac. So probably you have to say something to Docker to say. And there was a comment that uh, it is the performance in Mac. Sure, but if it's the performance is still fine, right? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the new M1 machine, the one that, the, that sells now for $7,000 to be maxing up, has a 12, cost, 12 CPUs and 32 GPUs. Uh, so it's 
uh, I think six times more powerful than the machine that I could actually have on the on, on, on this desk, right? So <laughs> even if it, it's the performance, it's going to be faster than this one. So <laughs> it's really- and It depends because I tried like to, uh, we got a Docker container for mm -hmm. the um, Itaka library. Yes. And on native Linux, it compiles on like nine minutes. Uh, I tried with the, the Docker thing, and it was like uh, one hour just to compile the whole library. So I don't know. I, I think there's an issue, maybe uh, something I, I'm doing. I mean, all of, all of these things for, for new architectures, they usually, <laughs> so I think it's still not mature enough to use uh, M1 for, for serious development uh, of old type machines. So if you, if you want to start from scratch now, you should probably use the APIs. And this will probably will taste for the machines. I mean, if, if you look at the performance of these chips, it's uh, my opinion is it has a huge potential, which is not uh, not even scratched right now. I mean, there's just the fact that the memory does it, it, on the same location of the CPUs and of the GPUs, it's, it, it makes it such a difference. If you see, uh, if you could exploit this in libraries like you do to library you would you would get some improvement in performance of factor 20. So I'm, I'm, I'm probably now it's not the right moment to try to, <laughs> to run old code with this uh, and uh, indeed it will probably take some time to to, to go in, in, in the correct direction of the correct regime. Okay. Well, sorry for the interruption. No, no, no. It's okay. Don't, don't, don't be sorry. This is exactly, this is exactly why I think it's important to do these types of things, right? So we need to learn. You need to learn. I, I need to learn also new things all the time. Right? So this is exactly the thing. So let's start with analyzing what we actually find is that uh, we are actually using in this particular case. So I'm using this starting from yield two dependencies focal, and if you search for that. It's still two dependencies focal uh, Docker hub. It will go here and gives me the deal to user has a lot of repositories, deal to and deal to dependencies, and then several other of these guys. If you look at the deal to dependencies, uh, all of these files are generated from a GitHub repository which is on DLI-I, and it's called Docker files. So there should be a Docker files here. And this generates dependencies, focal, focal, and bionic. These are two different, uh, bionic and focal are just names for different Ubuntu versions. Okay. So dependencies, focal, what does it do? Uh, it's a Docker file, okay? Exactly the one, like the one that we had here. And here you see, it starts from Ubuntu Focal. Let me, let me comment on this first, and then we go to the latest version of it. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to construct the perfect image on top of which I want to build the library that we have developed. Okay? So this is what you should be doing for your own applications. So for your own applications, you start, you first build the perfect container that contains all the software that you need in the development process and in the testing process. And then on top of that, you create an image that builds your library and deploy your library on top of whatever you had before. So here, for example, this guy over here uh, starts from the focal version of Ubuntu, latest version of Ubuntu, and uh, it takes arguments. And let's ignore this for a second and let's look at that. So it takes user root, so it runs everything that follows this line as user root, which is up to get updates and up to get installed, saying yes to every question that up to get may ask you. Software properties common. This installs every GCC and all the uh, common tools that you need to compile on this machine. Right? And then it adds a repository, which is a repository of the GL2 library for the um, Ubuntu package of the Deal2 library, okay? And then after it has installed that, uh, I, I added that, that repository, it starts by updating, again, up to get. So this gets latest, the latest packages available in that repository. And it starts by installing 
And here, uh, good practice should make this uh, alphabetically ordered so that you know when you have duplicates in the, in the version of the things or knows when, when you change things, you put things in the correct way. So you know exactly what is missing, what is not missing. And here, for example, we install Git, Google test, lead boost Python development, the O2 dev with the version that is specified here. So this is the version of the library that is installed in this part. And careful. So here I'm installing just the dependencies, right? So it seems strange to install the build to version of this. And you will see that I do exactly that. So I will install the version so that every single dependency of the version is installed. Okay. Including also locales, ninja build, moondiff, python3 dev, python3 pybind11, ssh sudo wget, and then I remove the library itself. Okay. After I've removed that, we also clean up apti lists and, and whatever that is in the apti get directory because this becomes very large if you have a large installation. Okay. And it sets the local devs. This single comment generates one of the shell one. Okay, so every run comment, every comment of this image, so the uh, except the args, every comment that you see here generates a new image. Okay. So for example, this generates the exact same image of the Ubuntu focal in which you are logged in as root. But the, there's no change in size, but there's a change in state of the machine. So you log in as root, not logged in as a standard user. Okay. So I install all of these things. Then I set the environment language as UTF-8 language. These are all needed for some of the libraries that are installed. Otherwise, they complain about no language specified. And then I do other stuff here. For example, I install plan format, which is used by the library to format automatically C++ files and H files. I uh, is, um, add a user, which is called DLI in this particular case, without passwords. I add it to the sudoers user list, okay? So that I can actually run sudo without having to type a password when I'm connected to this. I change the user directory to the correct user. And I now, at the end of this, I go back to switch user and I go to the user user. You know, this can be changed, right? So if I don't like to be called DLII, if I change that thing by passing as an argument to the build uh, of the image, it will use a different username as if it's build. And then when I am, this is used here to make sure that MPI correct, works correctly inside the Docker container. Uh, this is a specifically telling OpenMPI what type of hardware is used inside the container. Without that, OpenMPI will complain that some of this is not, is not uh, I mean, all of this is just uh, one Google search away. So if you have a problem, you Google search it, and then you add the commands that are here. And then it specifies work near home, where the home directory is home user. And that's why when you enter this thing, the home directory, home DLII is exactly oops, where you are left inside the image. Okay, is it clear? Questions so far? Yes. So you're installing the, the library and then removing it in order to have the dependencies? Yes, in fact, this, this image that, that we were looking at is called DLII dependencies. So dependencies on the focal architecture. So this is uh, an image that is used to have only the dependencies of the library, not the library itself. Okay. So then in order to get like the, the, the container for the library, you will start from these uh, containers. And indeed, that's exactly what happens here. Oh, okay. Now I have a Docker file here for the library itself. This is for the building of the library. And this Docker file takes the dependencies focal and it runs, becomes user root, go to user SRC, 
clone the GitHub repository, enter in the GitHub repository, create a build directory, enter in the build directory, run CMake, telling to use Ninja as a generator, as a CMake generator. You, you know, passes a couple of uh, prefixes, paths, and, and stuff like that in order to be able to use HDF5 in the correct manner. These are all things that are needed for the library itself. So your uh, requirements may be different. But this is a, once I have that, I install with the, with the examples without compiling them. I compile with the standard C17. I ninja install, and then I remove the git directory and the build directory. This leaves me in a state in which if I go to user SRC now, user SRC, you will see here, there's a deal to library that contains the source of the library as it was used to compile the library itself. So if I run debug in, in this image, so if I run db or gdb or whatever debugger I want to run here, gdb will also find the source directories and the source files that it uh, responds to. It's very useful for debugging purposes. Is it clear what is happening here? So I'm just running random commands to install libraries and to make sure that everything works as expected. Okay. Can you just go up to the, to the git? Yes, indeed. I didn't understand what the kind of update. I mean, what's this? As far as I understand, in the container, we are supposed to have uh, some libraries we use to develop our. Yes. So if you if you look at the documentation of Ubuntu Focal, uh, the the container library that is passed to you has no cache files whatsoever. So on Ubuntu, if you run apt-get and try to install a library, it won't find anything because. Oh. The, the app to get update has never been called. So you need to, you need to initialize it to get in order to, uh, to, to, to fetch information from the repositories and first. And then it is done. Yes, okay. exactly. And then yeah. if you update some actual packages, that's why. Right. No, 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 no. App to get update uh, doesn't update the packages. It update apt uh, cache itself. So it fills this directory, which is called var lib apt lists star. So this directory will contain a list of all packages that are available for your uh, the, web, the latest version of the packages that are available for your operating system. Yes. I have got just another question. Like in the Docker file of um, for building the library, can you go there? Yeah. So basically, from what I've understood, you're building the container locally, and then you're pushing it into the Docker hub. Right. No, in this, uh, so the, this Docker file only contains the instruction to build the container that doesn't contain any instruction about pushing or pulling. Okay, but I mean, uh, like uh, the, um, the container that I pulled uh, from the DL2 library, yes. was it built uh, automatically? Indeed. Uh, and it's renewed? Yes. So basically, the, if you do like the git clone of the the actual library from GitHub, it will be the latest each time. Is it like a renewed so, each day? Or? So the, the thing is, uh, the container that is responsible for building this container okay. doesn't know about this image yet. So if I ran this twice, it would not fetch again. It would just uh, it would just see that this command has already been run. So it, it actually creates a SHA-1, which is a SHA-1 of this text without all the separators and the, and the, and the spaces. Okay. okay. So the SHA-1 corresponds to the command that is being run. So it's not the binary state of the image. Okay. So it will not check whether the deal 2 library has changed remotely okay. before running this command. So if you run this command twice, it will not build the, the thing twice. If, uh, the second time we will say, okay, I already ran this command, so I won't try this again. The trick here is that this is run. Let me show you where this is run. And we should be able to do that on the DLI. DLI. 
GitHub. Uh, explore. No folder open. Open folder. Yeah, yeah. Open that. Okay. So now I open this folder and I am in the DLI I folder. I go to GitHub workflows. There's a Docker workflow. Okay. And this is the option, the object that is responsible for building the image of the tool. Okay. So this is called GitHub Docker. Now you should be able to read this. We did this last time, right? So it, what it does is whenever it's uh, something is pushed on master, and this only happens when a branch is merged on master. But what it does is build master Docker. It runs on Ubuntu latest. So this steps here says that on I take an image of Ubuntu latest, and on this image I check out the code. I use I set up Docker build x. This guy over here is uh, something that installs Docker and gives you the Docker build command that's available at your disposal. It logs into Docker Hub as DLI I to be able to push on Docker Hub. So a Docker login, and this is there's a secret which is added to the deal to uh, actions as a, uh, you can actually add those secrets in your configuration. So you don't need to store passwords anywhere except when you store them in a uh, encrypted value on the Docker website, the GitHub website. And here, this action is an action that actually enters in the directory that you specify and runs the command docker builds locally okay and the thing is if i if i did the same again after this on line 33 it will not build again simply because the, the image has already been built locally okay so what what happens locally is that it checks if the um, so let's go to contrib let's go to docker And let's go to, so this is the Docker that we're looking at. Okay. Oh, sorry. I am in the, I was trying to build from within the Docker. <laughs> Not a good idea. So let's go to deal to library, deal to, go to the country, Docker. And now I try to build locally. So a Docker build minus tag test DLII. So this creates a image which is called DL, test DLII. Okay. And it looks, uh, sorry, I need to do that. Okay. And so now it, it, it took everything from the Docker dependencies. And since I've never run this locally, it will run that command. Okay. Now, the problem is that this command is going to take a long time, so I don't want to do that. Okay. But this is exactly what's going to happen. Since I have never run this image locally, this is exactly what's going to happen now. It runs it once. If you run it again, it will say, no, that, that's a really big one. So I won't build it again. Uh, if you want to build it, really, you can. Uh, it, it said there's a, there's an option that you can pass the Docker build command. And it says no cache. So ignore cache when building the image. This is forcing the build to be done again. Okay. So sorry, you were telling that if, uh, uh, for instance, there is an update on the uh, GitHub uh, repository, mm -hmm. but I've already uh, built the container, I first need to remove the container, because if I build again, it will not update the container. Right? It will not build again a container yes. just because there's updates. Uh, yes. Oh. yes. So let's, let's make an example from scratch. So let's start with an example from scratch, okay? So I go for the courses, I go to the Git playground, and I go to lab 03, okay? And now what I want to do here is I want to be able to run 
for example, an image for a LaTeX document. Okay? So let's do this from, from very simple. And maybe LaTeX, uh, it's not a good example. You, let's use uh, Mini Conda as, as another example or something which is a little bit smaller than that. Otherwise, uh, life may become uh, too cumbersome and too difficult. Okay. So how do we proceed here? So the, what I would do here is I would open this into a file and I will create a new Docker file. Okay. So I create a new file here called Docker file. Okay, this. Uh, for some reason, this never works on my computer, but that's because I, I, I made many, too many modifications of these things. <laughs> so let me touch Docker file and then code Docker file. This should work. Okay, now I have a Docker file here, and uh, I'm going to specify where to start from. Okay, and so I want to run. Oh, also, uh, there's a there's a platform that you can pass to this. Now that I see it, platform equal ARM sixty four. Okay, right? and now here I'm using Visual Studio Code, so this is telling me all of the options of the various commands. So I think this is very convenient for that. Right. So the name of the base image to use, and you can you can actually do. Uh, several several other things. So what I'm saying here, I'm using Ubuntu, and here, as soon as I type Ubuntu, it checks for all the things that I know about the Ubuntu images, and I will say Ubuntu latest, for example. Okay, and I think maybe this should be Ubuntu Ubuntu latest, not Ubuntu alone. No, it's enough. So from Ubuntu latest, that's the mandatory things. And then you need to know maintainer. I need to specify who's the maintainer of this image. Okay, that's my email over here. So for some reason, this is being deprecated. Okay, so it's no longer maintainer. Let's, let's not use maintainer then. And let's start with this and see what happens, right? So if I now want to run this image, I do docker file, uh, sorry, docker build minus t test. That will create the image test starting from the current directory. Okay. And you should be seeing exactly this type of outputs, right? So it's downloading the Ubuntu latest. Okay. And building the image local. Okay. And you see here that it's pulled the thing from Docker IO library Ubuntu latest because by default it's using the registry called the Docker IO library. If you want to use a different registry, you, you can specify a different registry. Is it clear? Now, if you look at this, and you try to run things in this latest, in this Ubuntu latest, you can do that. Docker run minus T minus I. That means use a terminal and run interactively on the test image. And it should drop me into a root directory by default. So it will PWD is the root directory of this system. So if I do LS, this is a minimal Ubuntu system that is installed, okay? So for example, here, sudo is not even installed, okay? So here you need to be root in order to be able to install things. So if you ask for apt and search apt-get install, say for example, uh, I want to install Anaconda, I'm able to locate package Anaconda. You see, that's the reason why I was saying you need to first ask apt-get update. Now it's, it's pulling the information about the packages that are available and this should allow me to install Anaconda. Or maybe not called Anaconda, but Conda. Uh, 
install Anaconda using, oh, we were saying LaTeX, sorry, sorry. Apt-get install um, Let's search, install LaTeX, Ubuntu. Okay. So up to get install tech life. If you do tech life full, it's probably taking quite some time. So we could search for uh, search available packages up to get. So there's a command that allows you to search the packages from the command line. Okay, this is the uh, first thing. It's apt-cache search keyword. And let's do that. Apt-cache search LaTeX. And it will tell you all the packages that contain LaTeX. Okay, so let's say tech life instead of LaTeX. This should be a little bit shorter, not too much, not, not too much shorter. But you see, as Tech Life Science, Tech Life for Mathematics, Natural Science, Computer Science Packages, or Tech Life Lua Tech, or Tech Life Full, which is the full all components of Tech Life. And I wouldn't be uh, installing all of those. There's a tech life, recent selection of tech life packages. You can say tech life base, for example, essential programs and files. So one can say apt to get install tech life base, and this should proceed and install. So uh, after this operation, so this says you need to get 132 megabytes. And then after that, you have a 837 image. Right? So be careful about what you pull into the image. The shorter the image, the smaller the image, the better it is. And here, right now, I want to make sure that I'm running as the user root. This is the default, but I always like to write it explicitly. And I want to run the command. And the command that I want to run is up to get update. And then I do, I do App to get install tech live base. Okay. And you see, there's a there's a question that is asked to me. Let's say what happens if I say a country. I mean it, it's going to be complicated to make this on, on, on the common line. So time time zone tag. So you want to make sure that the app to get installed, it's done in a non-interactive way, okay? So force app to get non-interactive, non-interactive. When you ask for the questions, so there's an up to get minus Q minus Y, Okay. One can do that, for example, from Debian front end non interactive. So there's many options to, to force those things. But let's, let's see what happens if we just run this. So here now I'm in the container, right? So I've, I've tried to run the container things. Now this has tech live installed. So if I call LaTeX here, It should be. Actually, didn't we install that? So <laughs> I 
uh, which PDF effect it's not available. PDF effect should be available. So maybe that's not enough. So we can we should install app to get install tech live PDF attack, maybe. No. We had the, the cache, right? apt cache search PDF LaTeX. Tech live LaTeX. Ah, maybe I did the wrong, the wrong package. I just tech live essential programs and files, and I also need to install tech live LaTeX base. Otherwise, this is not going to work. Hmm? Install tech live, tech live LaTeX base. Okay, so I'm just installing some of the basic things that I need for the LaTeX. Okay. Now I should have PDF LaTeX. Yes, I have. Okay. okay. So this is my, my final goal for today. So I want to have this. And now if I run that again and try to run PDF LaTeX, you will see this is no longer there because I'm running a, an image which is now being deleted. Hmm. So I want to build again docker build minus t test dot. This should not need to pull the previous image, but it's just, in, and in fact, you see cached one out of two from docker io blah, blah, blah. And you see after this command, it has failed because I, I didn't answer why yes or no, right? So you want to make sure that app to get updates minus y minus q is one and this is the same here minus y minus q this should actually be responding yes to all questions and running non-interactively so i'm installing just tech life base and tech life latex text. You see? So I'm building this image. And this is exactly the way that I usually proceed, right? So I install things manually on the command line. And whenever I have something that actually works, I put all of those into uh, blocks of commands, which are self-contained. So for example, here, I'm installing everything that is related to later. And then the next page, the next step, I will install anything that is related to sudo, git, wget, everything that may be necessary for that. Oh, and then I, say, I, I see here that it's asking questions. I'm not sure if it's going to go forward or not. I install LaTeX, so tech live Docker without, so without answers. And as you see, I mean, this is no longer proceeding, right? So it's waiting for me to, to input things. So I have to stop this because it's not going to install those two things unless you answer the questions that the client base was, was actually asking, right? So um, how to answer 
tech life face questions docker or I search for Tianan LaTeX image Docker file. So there's a Docker image. So any of the Docker images of the, the LaTeX files will have will have instructions to install LaTeX, right? So you can actually look at the Ubuntu Docker file and see what, what they do. And install, assume yes, no install recommend, software properties common. So I'm looking for the tech line here. I think it's uh, Debian front end non interactive, probably. I've, I'm not sure whether this actually works. Let's see. Up. So we need to do that as a, as a separate comment, like that, and that. So now I'm setting Debian from the main interactive before calling install tech life phase and tech life plus phase. Sorry. Yes. While it is uh, building, I have a few questions. Yes, indeed. Go ahead. Uh, first is, uh, what uh, is the meaning of the SHA-1 that appears when I run the container? So the SHA-1 yeah. is, is uh, a way to uniquely identify the command that has been run. And uh, so, so it's a combination of several things. So it's a combination of the parent directory, the, the parent image where the command is. No, this doesn't work because it still stops at the geographic area. Okay, so we have to make a different thing. Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. probably that's, the, that's an easier way to. So to finish your question, so it's a combination of. Uh, uh, so it's a SHA-1 that uniquely identify the command that is run and uh, the parent image from where the command is run. So, so it, it identifies the, the Docker file, not the, the image no, no, I'm working with. It, it identifies uh, the command within the Docker file. Okay. So it's, it's as if uh, each one of these uh, commands that you see here are have as, as it says if you committed each one of these commands separately, so it, identif it identifies the SHA-1 of each one of these commands. So that when you build the image again, it will not run anything that has already been cached, like in this particular case. So the from command, which is this guy here, one, okay, will not be run again. It, it will simply be using the cached image from the Docker IO, and this is the SHA-1 that is used. Does that make sense? Yeah, and if I work in the, in the, in the container and uh, add packages and so on, and somehow... That doesn't, uh, that doesn't generate a SHA-1 that is usable by this process. So it, those will not be cached. Okay, okay. Thanks. 
Okay, so we need to do this separate, differently, or we simply use an existing image, which is called Tianon LaTeX. Tianon LaTeX image, which is my favorite LaTeX image for Docker. Yes, this is the image that I usually use for my tests. It's been, it's no longer maintained. So probably this could be updated somewhere else. But it's the default image that is used by Visual Studio Code, for example. And the reason why it's, it's there is because it's the uh, most, most recent version of that. So, let me just check whether it's possible to. Tap your root, some of those guys. The map. Bust this thing. It's difficult to figure out exactly which one of the images. I found are. maybe a solution. I didn't yes. test it. But uh, on a Stack Overflow, there is an answer saying that you can pipe uh, echo and the string you want to answer into the comment. Okay, so I want to pipe echo. I don't remember what was the answer that I gave. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think like, it was six uh, or. It should be eight. Yes. And uh, probably one. 8 and 41 to up to get. So let's yeah, see what that in uh, maybe with the dash, the up. Mm. I don't know the name of the symbol, but the. Uh, to indicate that it's uh, two strings and not. Uh, not one string, you mean like. Yeah. Uh, I think this should be working okay. So we could do that. Let's see whether that works. I mean, this is a lot of trial and error, right? So it's, it requires a lot of the uh, testing and, 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 and figuring out whether things work or not before one can have a working, a working configuration for a file. How would you do that point to that's the next uh, interesting part. So the next interesting part is you have two ways. If the file that you want to transfer is a file that you want to have inside the container, you can put it into, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a put command, uh, that is called uh, actually add command, that takes the file locally and it adds it into, into the container. And it needs to uh, take a file that is in the directory in which you're running, and it puts it into the destination where you're, where you're, where you're actually putting it. Like, for example, here, this would be add source destination. OK? So I'm saying add, say, for example, test.sh into user local test. SH, for example, this would add the file test of the SH to the file using local test SH inside the machine. Or if you want to share files between the container and the, uh, so see, this seems to have uh, to have uh, actually solved their issues, right? Okay, this is very good. It's very good. Maybe not yet. Maybe it hasn't finished yet. Was it just two answers, like eight and 14 months? Okay. okay. So the, the idea is um, to, to actually mount images from the local computer to the Docker container. So you can actually create a volume which has directory structure of the local directory inside the container. And then you work in there 
as it was looking a lot of that. The thing is, the changes that you make on files there are changes on your local machine. They are not changes on the file there. And this is passed at runtime when you actually run the container. This is not executed from within the container. Okay. It seems I don't like this and it's working. It, uh... Yeah, it's working. Is it? Okay, good. You you did exactly this? Yes, yes. All right. I did like this. It's a bit different because it's um in order to set uh, the time zone and the geographic area. So I'm echoing. Uh, I read it on the internet, but uh, as soon as you do these two things, you're not supposed to answer the question. Okay, good. So let me just, uh, did you, where did you find this? Uh, on, on the... It was maybe an answer. Yeah. How to set time zone before up to get installed. Okay. It's like minimal. This guy? Yeah. Uh, yes, this guy here, yes, right? And then as time zone. Uh, if you search for tech live, tech live Docker file on Google. Tech live Docker file. Yeah. And there is like, does an official recommended, no, 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 in, uh, on the results. Huh? There's like a stock exchange answer. Yes. Okay. And those are the. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let's copy paste <laughs> and let's use whatever. Yes. Okay. You to see them. I don't care about the time zone at the moment. Tech Live Latex Base, Tech Live Latex Extra. Yeah, probably Karen uh, This is Tech Live Latex Base. That's the only thing that I want to have. And not even that. Exit the coder. I don't want to have that. And let's just uh, have the minimal. We should. This should actually install the minimal thing, right? Oh, I don't want to upgrade. <laughs> the upgrade is going to to do to, to a, a lot of uh, oh. upgrading a lot of stuff. Sorry. Does it remove the image automatically from your laptop after using? Uh, no, I mean the the once you've built the image, this is stored in the image registry of Docker. So you can actually check what is the image registry of Docker. Like you can ask Docker what are the images that it knows about. Right. So if you have Docker images, and you will see here a list of all the images that are available for you on this machine. Now here, you will see, I have an image from Anaconda 3. I have uh, the test image. I have the deal 2 deal 2 image, which was created some time ago. And I have many other images over here, right? Dev container, Phoenix project, Tianon, LaTeX. Okay. So uh, indeed, that's going to be, to, I mean, let me let me just use Tianon LaTeX as an example, and let's just uh, go to uh, the default usage of that. 
and let, let's let's forget about trying to do that ourselves right? for the first second right so the, the idea is exactly this you install everything make sure that everything works without intervention from yourself uh, but this is not going to work in this particular case in this in such a short time so let me just do docker build dot minus t test Okay, so now this has created for me an image that contains the Tiano LaTeX image base. Right? So if I now docker run minus T minus I test, it should drop me into a system in which PDF LaTeX is present. Okay. All right, so my suggestion, as you saw, is use the latest possible version <laughs> or the uh, most complete system that you can think of with possibly the smallest size uh, in order to build your images from it. Okay? Okay. Now, what I would like to do here is I would like to make sure that we uh, <coughs> insert this image and, and we run comments from this image inside the um, inside the actions that we sent to the docker to the GitHub actions files. So I would like to do that. There's several ways to do it. So several, I would say several hundreds different ways of doing it. The most replicate, let's put it this way, the, the, the easiest way to be able to reproduce exactly what is happening is to exactly specify the comments that you need to run locally once you have Docker installed remotely. So to show you this, this concept, what I usually do is I usually create a comment here on, on uh, let, me, let me create this on the uh, GitHub repository inside lab03, and then I will push this, uh, this repository over here. Right, so I will create a file which is like, which I will call docker run.sh, which I will execute, make it executable. Okay, and then docker run.sh will run an image okay, file and a comment from the image file specifying everything that I need on the command line for, for that image. Okay, so let's use the Tiano LaTeX image without needing to build another Docker file. Right? So I want to Docker run. Uh, in, 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 I want to do this interactively on here. And the, there are several things that one has to be careful about for this, for this types of things. We will see each one of them uh, separately. Okay, so this comment, what I want the comment to do is to run the Tiano. And, and then here, LaTeX image, okay? And I want to be able to run the Tiano LaTeX image interactively, if necessary, and uh, mounting a volume, which is minus P, okay? PWD, so the current directory. So I'm mounting the current directory onto I think this is the, with the column, sorry. Uh, onto the working directory that I want to have remotely. So let, let me call this working space, remote, or workspace, remote, okay? And then when I enter in the Tiano LaTeX, I want to run the following comment, bash, uh, with CD workspace, semicolon, and then I want to run anything that is passed to the command line to this command. Okay. So the RSH LS should run the common LS in the container, which is Tiano LaTeX container.
Um, sorry, I need to run bash with the commands that I want to run afterwards. Okay, so uh, the the V doesn't seem to work. Sorry, I need to make sure that this is the correct uh, the correct script. I I do that. Perhaps seven all the time. So uh, I should have some. Uh, Let me check one of those, one of the guys that I know work. So for example, the, that one. All right, minus V, that's probably in space, which is missing there. Uh, and it's beam SH or beam bash, yes. So this could be beam bash. A minus C means the command. And I said that looks exactly what I wanted to have. Ah, uh, probably I don't need to be interactive. Yes, yes, sorry. So there was a minus C missing as an argument. So this, let me explain what is happening here, okay? And then I will explain all of the common lines that I have here. And let's also make sure that this is not run as the user root, but as the user ID minus U and ID minus G, okay? So if I now run the command UMI, it should not say root. It will tell you the user ID is user 501, which is the user ID that I have on the current computer. So this will allow me to actually create files in the current directory, okay? And edit files owned by me in the current directory. So what is this happening here? So I'm calling Docker and I'm running, passing a terminal, okay? and setting the user that runs the Docker image, that runs inside the Docker image as a user whose ID is, whose user ID is ID minus U and is, whose group ID is ID minus J. So this is the outcome of ID minus U. And this is the outcome of ID minus J. Okay, so I'm running as user 501 column 20, and I'm mounting the current directory on the workspace directory. Okay, now I run the image Tiano LaTeX and in that image, I run the command bash minus C, which means execute bash and run the command that I pass as an argument after the C. And the command that I pass as an argument is enter in the workspace directory and execute anything that I pass to you at the command line. Okay, this allows me to uh, prepend any command that I want to run with dr.sh. Right? And now I can actually do, for example, patch test of tech. Uh, sorry, I have to back, I have to. I mean, this should be in parentheses, uh, maybe I could I could probably do that by making this more intelligent. So I think something like 
that that should make it work, even if I don't say anything else. Nope. Um, all right, so this works if I put the, the semicolon, the columns there. Okay, so this is this is must, must have created a file test of tech, which I just modified. 1254 is exactly the time that I have now. And I think we were somewhere here. No? Here. Yes. Okay. Now, this guy over here is what it would use to prepend all the comments that you want to have with LaTeX. Okay. So let's create a minimal working tech file. Okay. Let me remove the Docker file. And let me have as test.tag, something which is very, very minimal, code test.tag. And the test.tag here, I want to begin document and document. And I want to have, uh, this is a tiny, tiny, tiny uh, LaTeX. Lay tech document. Right? And what I expect here is I expect here to be able to, to run dr.sh PDF lay tech test of tech. Uh, of course, PDF a lay tech doesn't exist. PDF lay tech test of tech, however, should run normal size and it's not defined. Um, uh, this should be a document class article. Yep. And here you see what happens if you don't enable the interactive <laughs> interactive in the in the terminal. So let me destroy that. And we do again the RSH PDF LaTeX test of tech. Bingo. This is now created a file which is called test PDF. And you can you can actually see the file locally, and you can see the file locally simply because I have mounted the directory on the workspace directory, and I'm working on the workspace directory as if it was looking at it. Okay. So if you see at the outcome of this, it will tell you that it's compiling the file in the, uh, so it doesn't, doesn't output the current directory anywhere here, but if you saw the current directory, this would not be the directory when I'm looking at now, it's not be this guy, but it would be the workspace directory. Right, so if I ask, to dr, where am I? Like, for example, by outputting pwd, it would tell you I'm in the workspace directory. Is it clear? Now, this is what I would like to use to create a PDF file using this tech.tag and make sure that the PDF file works in the actions that we have in the GitHub actions. All right? So, in a sense, here, what I want to do is I want to create a, uh, uh, let me make a copy of the, so the, we are in the GitHub playground, so we already have GitHub actions here. This is test minimal, and let's copy test minimal into, sorry, this is test minimal into uh, same directory with a file that is called build tech, build tech dot YML. And now, we open that guy and build tech YML instead of doing test Python codes, we'll build uh, the file test.tech in lab03 directory. Okay. So push on branches main and on pull request branches main. Um, let's let's uh, let's see this. This will call 
build the tank. Okay, and it runs in the room to latest. It checks out the things, and then I don't need to install anything. Okay, I just need to run the R of SH. Okay. If Docker is installed on the Ubuntu latest, which should be. So I should be able to run here. And in order to see that, let me, let me see the GitHub actions for one of my examples, which I use here, deal to fair deal to app. I have GitHub workflows tests YML. It runs on Ubuntu latest, okay? Now here, I'm running here, build LaTeX document. And what I don't do right here is actually, this is called lab03, the r.sh, which is the file that I want to run. And then I'm going to go, uh, actually, probably easier to do that by going to first in lab03. And then running DRSH LaTeX or PDF LaTeX test.tech. Okay. And this should be it. And if this succeeds, then you have a PDF, a test.pdf file. Okay which you can actually export as an, uh, as an artifact. So artifacts, GitHub Actions. No? So you can actually save the stuff for generate. Upload artifacts. So you can upload artifacts to GitHub. Here, this is the package. So I can actually see that, uh, I can show that in the deal to GitHub Actions. That's very, uh, that's where we used it. I mean, I never remember all these things by heart. Indeed, there's too many of those to know. But uh, for example, I know that in the Windows, at the end, we have an action that is called that. And that action is a name, which is uh, upload PDF file. And this is action upload artifacts. This is always continuum error true. And if X as arguments name, the name now that we want to build is lab03 test PDF. Sorry, we call it test PDF and it's lab03 test PDF. Okay. So indentation should be correct. So this is upload PDF file. It uses actions upload, upload artifacts version one. I do this always. I continue on error. I don't care about what happens to these things. Okay. And as you see, you can upload as many artifacts as you want. This will show up as a file called deal to windows.z, for example. This actually builds a Windows library of the build to library and it makes it available on GitHub Actions to users to download. Okay. For example, just to, once you build your application, you know that it's an application that runs Windows, you can do that. Okay. And let's do that here. And after we have done this on the terminal here, what I want to do at the moment is I want to, uh, I want to see where we are at the moment. We are in head, so I will do git checkout main. Ooh, git reset minus minus hard head. It doesn't know anything about these files here, so it won't change them. Okay, git checkout main. I'm nine commits, git pull origin main. So I get the latest version of origin, okay? And I give checkout minus B, uh, LaTeX test, okay? And here I get add docker run.sh and I get add test.tech. 
Now I should have two files, the r.sh in test.tag, which I can commit. And also I want to git add, of course, the um, what happened to the actions. Oh, it's in the same folder. Uh, this will build tag file in it. Okay. So this is the guy, and then I want to add that guy. And, and, and indeed, the reason why this is not happening is because I asked git ignore to ignore anything that starts with .git. Okay. So if you look at my git ignore files, which is my global git ignore file, so it's not here, it's uh, here. Nope, okay. It's somewhere somewhere before this, probably have a git ignore file that tells to ignore the git ignore reference. Uh, here, I have these three guys. So now I have a build tech YML, so I can actually git commit minus m add the test for PDF and git push origin latex test. And as soon as I do that, I can open that pull request. I don't need to create any more comments with respect to the title. This should actually start a test in a second. And you see, now there's also build LaTeX, right? So now it runs checkout, good. And it's pulling from, and as you see, as soon as you run dr.sh, since it doesn't know anything about the Docker image of Tiano LaTeX, it will pull the image first. Okay. So this is all it's needed in order to use a uh, tested environments or a known environment to run your things. You can push your own locally created image to Docker Hub and use this little script dr.sh to run your own locally created image on your Docker registry, uh, just as if it was the Tiano latex image. Right? Which is exactly what I'm doing in the other library that you saw before. So in the example that I showed you before, I mean, and that I quickly skim through to, to get uh, the, um, so there's a script, scripts, the art of the sage. This guy, over, this guy over here actually uses GitLab CI YML image to run everything that is, uh, that is in the art of the sage. And it uses that image to run things. So if I now look at the, at the image that is used there, that should be the two latest. It's AML. It's DL2 masterful. Mm -hmm. So each one of these pro projects, so for example, GitLab has a slightly different support for YML or a slightly different support for, for this type of image files. And now I would like to go here and actually see, yeah, everything has worked. Upload PDF files. If you look at that, this is now uploaded. And there should be artifacts here. View workflow file. Now that's okay. Build LaTeX should have artifacts somewhere. Um, okay, so I don't see the artifacts anymore. And that they must be somewhere. LaTeX. Where are they? Uh, I lost them. Maybe it is on the file. No, no, there's a, there's a artifacts somewhere. These should be in the actions 
they usually are created Oh, let me see whether this was actually ran only. No, this does all of the steps. So let's merge this for a second. Now, as you see, where do I find artifacts? <laughs> GitHub actions. Minutes uploading artifacts. Where are they? Where are they? Downloading workflow artifacts in actions. Okay, that's the guy where we are. And they're artifacts. Okay, I, I didn't find the artifacts. I, I remember there was an artifacts thing in there. So in the actions, there should be somewhere around here an artifacts on the workflow. Uh, it's not here. No, come on. I don't find the artifacts. It's, it's probably incredibly easy to find, but I'm not, uh, I'm not seeing it here. So, jobs. Not in the archive. Did you see, do you see the artifacts somewhere? I'm changing what it's on. So it should be like, there is a, like a section called the artifacts. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking for the section art. I remember the section artifacts, but I don't see it. <laughs> uh, so it should be somewhere here. So there should it be appeared a... uh, in the merge pull request uh, twelve. So if you go to the merge pull request twelve and click here, yes, jobs. Oh yes. Oh yes. Sorry. Sorry. It's here. And now you click on the test PDF. And I mean, of course, you download the zip file that contains the test PDF. But if you look at the zip file, and then this contains actually the actual tiny LaTeX document that you've just created. Okay. I mean, just as it is in this moment, this test can be constructed. This, this can be added as a, as a minimal script to your own directory on the GitHub repository that contains your native files with the GitHub action associated to it to build the PDF files of all the documents you have. That are all the PDF files, keep under GitHub. Okay. It's extremely powerful, and I would suggest you to do that all the time. Because it's, I mean, it's really useful to have the latest version of the PDF file of the Git repository without having to go the repository, create the things, upload the Git, and so on. Uh, can I actually upload it to the repository without uh, making it uh, like uh... It's not a good idea to upload the PDF to the oh, repository. Okay. We, I mean, the PDF of the document, so let, let me put it this way. In the GitHub repository, you should never put anything that you can produce with the GitHub repository itself. So if you, you can put, you should put the data, you should put the tech file, but you should not put the PDF that is produced by the tech file. Okay because that PDF is going to change at every commit and it's reproducible exactly by the commit itself. Okay. So it's a bad idea to keep it. And like, it's exactly the same thing as why you don't put in the Git repository the object files that you have compiled. You only put in the repository 
the source files and the H files and the CC files or the Python files, not the actual objects which are. Okay. Any questions? So this is just a very brief overview of how to use Docker. Okay. And uh, I just scratched the surface, but there's a, there's a huge amount of things that you can do. You can combine Docker images together using Docker Compose, and you can actually set up a cluster of servers from at your disposal. And there's a lot of uh, usefulness in, in doing that to test uh, how MPI run works, how some looking things works as well. So let me stop the share. And you have any questions online? Mm, I cannot uh, run, uh, <laughs> but I think I have to look up the documentation. I cannot run uh, Docker as a user, but I always need to sudo every command I, I issue. You need to add yourself to the Docker group. Ah, okay. So run Docker as regular user. The first thing that tells you, uh, it tells you that you need to group add Docker, and then you need to add yourself um, as a user to the Docker group. And it should be one of the very first things that is specified somewhere here. So run Docker as regular user, second. User mode minus, minus AG Docker, and then your username. Okay, I try. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry, I wasn't sharing my screen. That's why probably you reacted in such a <laughs> land way. So let me share again the desktop. So this is the first thing that comes if you search for run Docker as non root user. So it allows you to, you should do that as sudo. But last time you do that as sudo, it allows you as a user to run Docker. Okay, yeah. And stop, and let me stop the screen.